हेलो एंड वेलकम बैक टू दिस चैनल डियर स्टूडेंट्स दिस टॉपिक इज आई टू सी बस स्टैंडर्ड एंड एस पी आई दैट इज सीरियल पेरिफेरल इंटरफेस वी कैन एक्सपेक्ट द डिटेल शॉर्ट नोट रिलेटेड टू दिस आई टू सी बस स्टैंडर्ड एज वेल एज एस पी आई फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वट इज दिस आई टू सी बस स्टैंडर्ड इट इज सिंक्रोनस सीरियल बस प्रोटोकॉल इन वेरी मच सिंप्लीफाइड लैंग्वेज it it uh, consists of a special type of bus which carries the information i mean that particular bus makes use of two lines when is sda here i have written which is a data line and second is scl that is a clock line so by making use of these two lines this bus is capable or used to transfer the information from one device to another device that is i2c now different terminologies are used in case of i2c bus standards so first is multi master which is the major characteristics of this bus standard that means many master devices can be uh, connected in simplified language what is the master device for example here i have shown two microcontrollers microcontroller a and microcontroller b suppose we want to transfer the data from microcontroller a to microcontroller b then everything will be controlled by microcontroller mu c a so mu c a microcontroller a will be a master device as and this microcontroller b will be a slave device likewise we can have n number of master devices then transmitter very simple it is the device which is used to transmit that that is for sending the data to the bus bus is the thing through which the data is traveling then receiver it receives data from the bus then master just now i explained it initiates transfer it generates clock signal and also it is responsible for terminating that is uh, to stop the transmission so to begin the transmission to generate the clock signal and then to terminate the transfer uh, this activity is uh, controlled by the master device then slave this is the device which is addressed by the master device then arbitration it is one particular process which ensures that only one master controls the bus see we have only one bus which consists of two wires two lines sda and scl sda is data line scl is clock line at a if there are many masters in the system then if two or three masters uh tries to make use of the same bus at a at a time then there is one particular process that is arbitration process this process takes care that at a time only one master takes control of this bus that means only one master will be in active condition whereas you know, even if there are request from other masters that request won't be activated next is synchronization very simple as the name indicates this uh, it is the system in which clock signals of many devices are synchronized now let us talk about this diagram as an example i have drawn the diagram to explain the concept of i2c bus as i mentioned we are considering two microcontrollers microcontroller a and microcontroller b suppose our requirement is we want to transfer the data we want to transmit the data from microcontroller a to microcontroller b and uh, let us say microcontroller a is a master microcontroller then this master microcontroller will first address this slave microcontroller and it generates the clock signal and it will start transmitting the data so data will be transferred by using these two bus sda and scl and it will be received by the slave microcontroller that is microcontroller b suppose another uh, condition if we want this microcontroller a which is again a master microcontroller if if this microcontroller a wants to receive the data from microcontroller b then do remember in this case also this microcontroller a will be the master microcontroller but it want to receive the data now instead of transmitting the data in this case also this microcontroller a will initially address the microcontroller b and microcontroller b will start sending the data it will be reached it will be received by the microcontroller a then microcontroller a will again whenever required will terminate the process so this is about the basics of i2c bus standard 
Now let us discuss few important features of I2C bus standard. From the exam point of view, we may expect the separate question related to features of this uh, bus standard. So as we discussed, it consists of two wires, that is two lines. One is HDA, that is a data line, and another is SCL, which is acting as a clock line. And both these lines are bidirectional. So, uh, using this standard, we can transmit the data either way. That means bidirectional data transmission is possible. Then, every device which is connected to this bus has its own unique address. Next, allows sharing of network resources between the processors. So, you can share n number of resources between any two uh, mi microcontrollers, you may say. So, this, this concept is called multi-mastering concept. Then, I have already explained uh, this arbitration process, which is the process in which collision is avoided. That means, if at a time, two or more uh, devices, rather microcontrollers, tries to send the signal to become an active master, then in that case, this using this arbitration process, the collision is avoided and only one device will be allowed to act as a master at a time. Then it contains on-chip filters. Uh, as the name indicates, because of this filter, any noise spikes are avoided. Then this particular data transmission is bidirectional. It is a serial data and it is 8-bit data transmission. There are three types of modes of operation. So first is standard mode, which is limited to 100 kbps uh, speed. Another next is fast mode, which is having 400 kbps speed. And third is high speed mode, which is approximately 3.4 megabytes per uh, second. Then Maximum bus length can be 4 meters. It contains clock synchronization. The number of devices connected to this bus is limited by the maximum bus capacitance and this value of maximum bus capacitance is 400 picofarad. So basically this value of capacitance decides how many devices you can connect to this particular bus. Then when any device is free, uh, both SDA and SCL line related to that device will be high. So these are few important uh, features of I2C bus standard. Next, let us discuss start and stop conditions. Basically, start means it is starting of, let us say, transmission of signal and stop means terminating, ending of transmission of signal. We have discussed the meaning of these two wires, that means these two lines. HDA is data line, SCL is the clock line. The master device is responsible for starting as well as terminating uh, the particular operation, that means particular data transfer. So, let us first talk about the start operation. Suppose for to, uh, to start the particular uh, data transmission, this SCL line should be high. So this, this particular condition indicates that SCL line is high. So when SCL is high and at that time, during that time period, if SDA line shows the transition from high to low, this transition is from high to low. So in that case, provided that SCL is high and SDA shows transition moment from high to low, then this particular condition indicates the starting condition. Same way, stopping condition or terminating condition, again, the SCL line must be high and there should be transition from low to high. So if SCL is high and there is a transition of SDA, from low to high, then in that case, it indicates the terminating condition. Question arises why it cannot be the stop condition. See, what we discussed, the SCL line must be high. So in this case, during this, the, there is a transition from high to low, but in this case, SCL is not high. It is a transition, uh, transmitting from high to low. So do remember the basics. SCL line must be high and high to low Transition of HDA indicates starting operation and low to high transition of uh, SCA, SDA represents the terminating operation. As I mentioned, this starting and terminating operations are controlled by the master devices. Whenever 
uh, the starting condition is activated that means the data transmission is going on at that time the bus condition will be busy and whenever there is a termination of data transmission the bus will be free so that any other device can be accessed the next part is SPI that is serial peripheral interface this diagram shows internal register structure of serial peripheral uh, interface there are two uh, major registers one is data register here i have written tx that is transmitter this is data register receiver again at uh, this this is this block is uh, acting as a master this is a slave same thing data register transmitter data register receiver and we are making use of shift registers so this spi that is serial peripheral interface it is a type of interface which provides bidirectional synchronous serial communication between microcontrollers and its peripherals two important terminologies are used one is mosi that is master data output and slave data input so this line is shown like this master data output because arrow is coming out from this master block so master data output and slave data input it is it is uh, as shown in this diagram connection between the two shift registers then miso that is master data input and slave data output so this is the save block here the uh, output data is shown from the shift registers of save data block and it is uh, moving towards or it is uh, applied to the shift register of master block so it is master data input and slave data output now it is this particular protocol or this particular interface is based on master slave uh, protocols the number of masters and number of slaves can be uh, connected but as we discussed in earlier cases also in this case also this master is responsible for controlling the clock signals and all major activities now let us discuss some important features of spi the data word size is 8 bits it is basically synchronous serial data link it operates in fully duplex mode it provides holding facility then data transmission is in the form of multiple blocks or multiple pages and maximum bit rate is 10 mbps now comparison between spi and i2c spi is simple and efficient for point to point communication systems whereas for point to point communication i2c bus is a complex process then spi provides fully duplex mode whereas this is having simplex mode then maximum bit rate for spi is 10 mbps in this case it is 1 mbps advantages it is low cost system and it provides higher speed compared to i2c uh advantage of this i2c is multiple masters can be connected disadvantage of spi is only single master is used and disadvantage of i2c is slower speed <clears throat> next examples serial eprom 25xxxx series this example of i2c is 24xxxx series so these are the few points which shows comparison between spi and i2c so dear students that's it for today's session so thank you thanks a lot for watching this video